Good morning and welcome to this morning's service and Merry Christmas. You may wonder, well, why is he saying Merry Christmas? Well, we're now in Christmas tide. Um, so between December 25th and January 6th, which are the 12 days of Christmas, we have Christmas tide. So uh, Christmas is a season, and so we're continuing uh, this first Sunday after Christmas. So now let's call ourselves to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise God from the heavens. Young men and women alike, old and young together, let us praise the name of the Lord whose name alone is exalted above the earth and heaven. Alleluia.
ourselves to confession. Jesus, our Lord, came into an indifferent world, yet his life revealed the inner thoughts of many. Let us confess our sins before God and one another that we may receive release from our sin. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have not lived as your faithful children. We have kept silent in midst of prejudice and hatred. We have been idle in the face of violence and injustice. We have not been a light to the nations, and our lives have not revealed your glory. Forgive us, merciful God. Repair the ugliness of our sin and restore us in your beautiful grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Beloved of God, as a, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and a bride adorns herself with her jewels, God covers us with the robe of righteousness. Know that you are forgiven in Jesus Christ and live as God's beloved. Amen. Our minute for mission today is about the Christmas joy offering. Each year during the Advent and Christmas season, we turn our eyes to Bethlehem and celebrate the wonderful, wondrous gift of Jesus Christ, our Savior. God has blessed the church with incredible leadership in every place and time, but those leaders often need to be supported by their communities as well. This offering addresses the support needed by some of our leaders including supporting leadership development for communities of color and providing support for Presbyterian church workers in their time of need. The Christmas Joy Offering has been a cherished Presbyterian tradition since the 1930s. The offering distributes gifts equally to the assistance program of the Board of Pensions and to the Presbyterian-related schools and colleges equipping communities of color. The assistance program provides critical financial support to church workers and their families. Presbyterian-related schools and colleges provide education and leadership development while nurturing racial and ethnic heritage. This has been a Presbyterian commitment for nearly 140 years. Please consider a gift to this offering in the spirit of the season and in gratitude for all that has been freely given to us. Thank you again for your continued generosity and have a happy new year. Our first reading today is from Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10, through chapter 62, verse 3. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, and my whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For the earth brings, for as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I shall not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I shall not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. kiddos. I am so glad to be joining you today. I'm actually in my office because 
Uh, we had some other stuff going on in the sanctuary at the moment, but I wanted to be sure I had a chance to speak to you because, my friends, you are very, very special. You are very loved, and you are very welcomed. And that is kind of what today's scripture is all about is we, we know that we just had Christmas, and I'm guessing you had a very special visit on the night of Christmas Eve. And so, but one of the things that, that happened for Jesus, for baby Jesus, is he, on, in the scripture today, uh, gets to go to the temple, to his church, and there he is welcomed. He is welcomed and made to feel very special uh, as, as he is expected by so many. And so I want you to know that you are expected, that you are loved, and that you are one of the most important parts of this church and this group of people who worship God together. And when we can't be together, or when you're not with us, we miss you. And it's very important that you know that, that you are so much a part of this community. And we are so glad that you are. So, let's just take a minute now and we'll have a little prayer. Holy God, we thank you for the warm welcome that you give each and every one of us. We pray for each and every child in this church and all children, Lord, that they may know how welcome and loved they are by all who seek your kingdom. And Lord, we pray today that uh, those special prayers that they have would be heard and that, that they would just know the love and compassion that you have for everyone. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please pray with me. As you led Simeon to embrace the infant Jesus, Guide us, Holy Spirit, by your grace and by your gracious light that we may welcome your saving word. Amen. Our gospel lesson today comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. Listen now for the word of the Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought the child, Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples. A light 
for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And then the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce in will pierce your own soul too there was also a prophet anna the daughter of phanuel of the tribe of asher she was of great age having lived with her husband 7 years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, friends, how do we celebrate the birth of a child? Let's just take a moment and put things in perspective as we consider the text. Mary and Joseph have traveled from Nazareth to Jerusalem to Bethlehem back to Jerusalem during a time of emotional and physical exhaustion. The Magi have not yet brought their gifts, and this young family is running low on resources and is no doubt exhausted. They have a newborn with them. Newborns aren't exactly known for sleeping through the night. But following their customs, they went to make the appropriate sacrifice. Now, as they were poor, there was sort of a different category of sacrifice. It was two turtle doves or young pigeons. They brought the sacrifice to God to celebrate their son. This may not always be how we think about such things. Giving to God is a celebration. Not expecting anything for themselves, but only praising God for this occasion is a way of exalting God and the blessings received in this new child. What would that look like if we today, if we responded to God purely out of gratitude for all that God has done for us, each and every one of us, for everything God has done? We might say, well... I could never repay God for such an immense gift. You're right. We can't. It isn't about balancing a value as if, say, God gave us that $25 gift card, so then we need to turn around and give God a $25 gift Mary and Joseph gave according to their situation. We are no different. The grace of God we know through Christ has us covered. Suppose if on one big occasion in our lives we found a way to make a sacrifice to God. 
And I don't mean sacrificing animals, but by giving of ourselves, whether it's our time through volunteering or resources like financial or, or betting. I'm, I'm seeing lots of betting being gathered in the, in the gathering space. What if we gave gifts to God on our birthday or at our graduation if we gave recognition and praise to God? You see, there are all kinds of ways to celebrate. Now these days, uh, this is something you see a lot, especially on social media. Um, we celebrate almost monthly of a new child. So we're seeing the progress of this child through pictures and, and little graphs and, and accomplishments. You know, today crawling and, and reaching for things and first words. And then, usually, when we hit that one year mark, we have a wonderful party with gifts, of course, for the one whose birth we're celebrating. Well, in other places, in other nations, there are different ways of celebrating. In Korea, one of the first significant celebrations in a child's life is 100 days after birth. You see, not so long ago, it was unfortunately very common for a child not to survive to 100 days. But if she or he did, then it was certainly a cause for celebration. Mary and Joseph, they came to worship God with the appropriate sacrifice. But unknown to this young family, there are two who have been expecting them, looking forward to their visit. Simeon and Anna, sometimes called Hannah. Both advanced in years. Simeon had been looking forward to this day for some time. God was with him by the Holy Spirit and assured him that he would see the Messiah before he died. And Anna was a devout prophet who also knew the greatness of this small child. These elders were overjoyed to welcome the Christ child. All children should be so lovingly and overwhelmingly received. Do you realize around 10,000 babies are born every day in the U.S.? How many of them are celebrated? How many of them are recognized by our society? Do they have to be wealthy? Are there expectations? What if it's a young family with dark skin and limited resources? How will they be seen by society? As a joy or a burden? Do all newborns have the same possibilities and potential in life? Hmm. That's a lot of questions, isn't it? Yet another question. Practicing our faith, we can respond to these questions. We can make a difference in the life of every newborn by beginning from a place of love and inclusion. Love and inclusion. We can be for these children, what Simeon and Anna were for Christ, the ultimate welcome wagon. Who doesn't love a baby? Have you ever been openly welcomed somewhere yourself? You know, for school-aged kids, it might be that when they get to school on that first day, and, and maybe the teachers have done all of this preparation to help the kids feel at ease. And in doing that, 
the child goes in and sits down at a desk with their name on it, with every all the papers that they need. They're called by their name accurately. How wonderful and inviting that is. It's a small, simple thing, but it can be very inviting. Now, as adults, we may find that when we go to a conference and being welcomed there with a name badge with our name spelled correctly, sometimes it's not as easy as you think. But to be expected, to be honored by being expected. How can we make others Others feel welcomed in that way. Through some outreach, we do that somewhat here. We help provide beds and bedding. You're gathering that in the gathering space. And food through the food pantry. And there are other needs to help little ones know that they are expected loved, and nurtured with prayers for success. Isn't it wonderful to be treated as if you're expected? It, it's a very special feeling. It's wonderful to be expected. And friends, you are expected. There's a place for you at Christ's table. There, at Christ's table, we are joined with every believer. No matter skin tone, or gender, or nation, or social class, or anything, we are joined together at Christ's table. And there's a spot at that table with your name on it, and mine, You see, that is what the kingdom of heaven looks like. All are welcome. All are known by name. And that's what we want to strive to be as a community of faith. We want to be those who are helping create the kingdom of God here on earth. We are to do our best to do that here because we know what God's kingdom looks like. And we can do this by loving God, loving neighbor, loving ourselves, welcoming all to join us in practicing this love which is reaching out with what Robert Schneis calls in his book, Five Practices of Fruitful Converse Congregations. I'm going to say that again. Five Practices of Fruitful Congregations. It's not a tongue twister. Five Practices of Fruitful con Congregations. It's radical hospitality, passionate worship, Intentional faith development, risk-taking mission and service, and extravagant generosity. You see, these are not casual or accidental ways of serving God, but acts of faith that push us from our comfort zone into a place of transformational service and community. It builds community as we're accomplishing these five practices. So in the coming weeks, I'll be expanding on each of these practices, uh, kind of weaving them into the sermons, if you will. So be looking for those you may certainly even want to check out his book. His name again is Robert Schneis. 
S-C-H-N-A-S-E, I think, Five Practices of Fruitful Congregations. So now, as we're closing this message today, I want to close with just one more question. What does radical hospitality look like to you? What does radical hospitality look like to you? Please pray with me. As children of God and heirs of the promise, 
Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Loving God, hear our prayers. For the Holy Church of God, that all who have been baptized into Christ may shine like the dawn, bear witness to the good news of Jesus, and light the way of salvation in Jesus' name. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayer. For the nations of the earth, that governments and those in authority may protect the vulnerable, shelter the oppressed, and pursue the way of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayer. For Marcellus and for all places of human interaction and livelihood, that kindness may abound and compassion prevail and harmony endure. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayer. For the planet Earth, our home, that we may honor her gifts, respect her limitations, and protect her resources. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayer. For those troubled with illnesses, hardship, or conflict, that they may receive healing in the, of, for their bodies, release from their burdens, and mending of their brokenness. Let us pray to the Lord, loving God, hear our prayer. Hear us, O God, for our eyes have seen your salvation. Let your light shine through us and fill the world with the radiance of your love revealed in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns in glory. All this we pray in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now, for the invitation to the offering. As the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so will God cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. So now, with thankful hearts, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. One of, there are a couple of ways that you can present your offering. If you are able to mail it, you can get our P.O. box from the bulletin or from the website, or just call the church office, and Sandy would be glad to share the information with you. Um, if you don't mind stopping by the church, you can certainly uh, slip it under the door of the church office, and it will be taken care of. Uh, or you can also give online through PayPal. So now let's have a prayer of dedication. Loving God, we give you thanks for the light of the world, Jesus Christ, through whom we have received adoption as your children. With Jesus, our brother, we dedicate ourselves in ministry to the world that we may live as heirs of your promise to the honor and glory of your name. Amen.
friends, go forth into the world rejoicing. Spread the good news of Christ as our light and our redeemer. Now, may God, redeemer of Israel, dismiss us in peace. May Christ, Son of God, Son of Mary, uphold us in love. And may the Holy Spirit, the power of God, guide us in truth. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.